The catching position was undoubtedly the weakest spot for the Astros last year. And for a team like the Astros, who were the best offense in baseball and don't have many weak spots, you're allowed to have one liability for your team. But Martin Maldonado needs to ride the bench because we have a guy on our bench just sitting there for one more year who arguably can be a top 10 catcher right now with top five upside potential and we're just keeping him there and his name is Jason Castro the Astro now I want you guys to take this with a huge grain of salt because Jason Castro didn't have many opportunities last year thus his sample size was really really small thus when comparing him to others I had to lower the plate appearance requirements which you know skews the results in a way that i'm not sure how to account for yet i'll learn but right now i don't know how to account for it so take all this with a huge grain of salt even though i think this is more of a testament to why dusty baker needs to start jason castro because amongst players with 170 see how little of a sample size that is 170 plus plate appearances last year Jason Castro was in the 87.7th percentile in expected slugging. That's really good. 91st percentile in expected weighted on base average. 95th.1 percentile in expected on base percentage. 98.7th percentile in sweet spot. 96.6th percentile in expected Woba on contact. The, I mean, I'm just throwing you guys a lot of stats right now, but. These are great stats, like, obviously it's skewed because Jason Castro had to do what he did for less time than a lot of other players, like Bryce Harper or something. So, you know, take every number that I just threw at you and squish it in for a little, alright? Because these numbers are showing that Jason Castro is a top 10% player, but that's probably not the case you know I, if you look at his past years 2020 and stuff his years weren't as great even though in 2019 he was getting a little unlucky too if i recall i don't have that on my notes right here but you know this guy this guy's hitting the ball hard as he usually does he doesn't you know get a lot of luck with it but He's got, he's obviously got what it takes. I mean, 170 plate appearances is still a lot, just not a lot relative to MLB players because they play 162 games a year. But if you look at all these numbers, they they right now say that he's a top 10% player according to XWOBA, expected on base percentage, XWOBA contact, sweet spot percentage, barrel percentage, 9.3 percentile. But again, when you take it with a grain of salt, this guy still has the potential to be a top 10% player. He just needs to be active, you know? And what hurts me the most is, I mean, it's pretty obvious that if Jason Castro with these numbers, I mean, he can see these numbers, they're free. He probably sees other numbers too that are like, oh, wow, I was doing really good last year. If, I, if I'm Jason Castro and I'm looking at these numbers, I'm like, dude, I'm better than this dude right now. Why am I not playing, Dusty? Why am I not playing? Because when we when he when we signed him, <laughs> that's stuttered. When we signed him, we all expected him to platoon. You know, he's the lefty, Martinez the righty. When we face the righty, we'll put in Jason Castro. That wasn't the case. In fact, Jason Castro started most of his season facing the lefty starters, which is really weird. And he owns Rizal Iglesias, who is baseball's second best reliever right now. So. If I'm him and I'm, and I'm seeing these numbers, especially my numbers in high leverage situations, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not staying here. But I'm not starting, you know. Um, Castro deserves so much more. I'm afraid that I'm afraid that they might trade him away or something because he is an asset. But I want the asset. I don't want Martin Maldonado behind the dish for a majority of the 2022 season, especially if we lose Carlos Correa and we have to make up that for that bat. Jason Castro did pretty darn good in his small sample size. Why don't we use him to try to make up for Carlos Correa's bat? Um, additionally, we actually have some catchers lined up who are absolute beasts. But before I go into the next guy, 
let me just say that amongst catchers with at least 170 plate appearances, I think, or 150, I forgot how Fangraphs had it. It's 150 or 170, I'll have it like up here. Amongst catchers with that many plate appearances, Jason Castro had the fourth highest expected weighted on base average. So he has the potential to be a top five catcher. He's just not being started for some reason. So Dusty, start your guy. Start Jason Castro. We need Jason Castro. And then if, let's say, even if Jason Castro does not, you know, sign, even if we start him, let's say he does good, he doesn't sign, or he does bad, and he leaves, we got a guy coming up soon who is in single A right now. I, I want to start him this season at double A, even though we have Corey Lee. I want him at double A, starting over Corey Lee, and then if he's doing productively, I want him at triple A by midseason, and then next year call him up because I I don't think this dude is slowing down. He has not shown any signs of slowing down yet, ever since, well, ever since we acquired him. But even before we acquired him this year, this dude has been a monster in the minor leagues, and that guy's name is Yaner Yaner. I think that's his name, Yaner Diaz. <laughs> He was acquired in the Miles Straw trade when Miles Straw went to um, Cleveland for Phil Maton and Gainer Diaz. Um, in 2018, he posted a 149 weighted runs created plus in 41 games in rookie ball. And then he went to, he stayed in rookie ball. In 2019, he posted a 212 weighted runs created plus. And then he went to um, single A but wasn't doing as well. He had a 103 rate of runs created plus there in 34 games. And then and then this year he started in single A again. He posted a 122 rate of runs created plus. We acquired him and he wasn't doing as well for us in, um, in single A. In 12 games, he posted a 46 rate of runs created plus, plus, not good. But then when we promoted him, despite him struggling to uh, advanced A, he had a 213 weighted runs created plus. So let me just summarize all that for you because I was just reading it off a note. And I'm still going to read it off a note. But let me just summarize that for you. 2018 rookie ball, 149 weighted runs created plus at age 19. 2019 at age 20, 20 games, 212 weighted runs created plus. Again, small sample sizes, but it's the minor leagues. So that's why. And then uh, single A, but like with a minus, whatever that means. Single A, 103 way to runs created plus, slowed down, and then skipped the whole year because of the pandemic. Whatever he was working on during the pandemic, it was working because when he came back in single A, 122 way to runs created plus, got traded at high value, which is what I want to do with Jose Siri, but uh, got traded with the Astros, struggled, 46 way to runs created plus in 12 games, and he had... 61 games with the Cleveland Indians minor league team. So 61 games, 122 weighted runs created plus. That's pretty darn good. Slowed down with the Astros single leg team. And then moved up to single leg advanced, advanced A. Played 25 games there and hit 11 home runs slashing 396, 438, 781. That's absolutely insane. Even if it's only for 25 games. So if this guy doesn't slow down, which I don't think he will because he spent a majority of the season, you know, with 61 games in single A with Cleveland and then 25 games at advanced A with us posting a 120 plus way to runs creative plus. I don't think this dude's going to slow down. I think this dude's got what it takes to be very productive behind the dish. I think he needs at least a year of development, which is why with Martin Maldonado and Jason Castro both having their contract years this year, it kind of lines up perfectly. If you start Yaner Diaz in trip, sec, not, sec, not second A, double A, double A, and then move him up to triple A mid-season, you line him up perfectly. His estimated arrival time is 2023, so that lines up. So you have a guy who could be very productive, replacing two guys who... You know, one's not as productive, and the other one is pretty darn productive. If they both leave, Martin, 
I heard the Royals want you. You should you should listen to it. Uh, if you if you if you do all that, the the timing lines up perfectly. Start Jason Castro, see how he does. Put Yaner Diaz in Double A, see how he does, and then mid season. Heck, even if Yaner Diaz doesn't do as well, and you don't want to promote him yet, promote Corey Lee then. Put Corey Lee to Triple A, and then one of these guys. I mean, they're bound to do all right. If you if you if you fill up the shortstop role next year, you know, a sign a filler shortstop like Trevor Story maybe for one year, and then sign a star shortstop next year like Trey Turner. <laughs> That's not happening. But if you do that next year, and then you make up for that shortstop role, then now you have one spot that you could be like, hey, we could we could keep this week a little, and that could be either Corey Lee or Yaner Diaz if they don't live up to the potential. So all this is just. Fitting too perfectly for Yaner, Diaz, Corey Lee, Jason Castro. I mean, it, it would just honestly be so foolish if the Astros decided to start Martin Maldonado instead of Jason Castro. And the sad thing is, that's what's going to happen. Because Dusty Baker is just that kind of manager who says, You were here longer. I want you to be my guy. You're my guy. You've always been my guy. I don't care what the numbers say. You're my guy. I'm going to keep you there. That's not the way to go, Dusty. Dusty did that with Miles Straw and forced James Click to trade him away. And that caused some front office issues, right? So, you know, James Click is super analytical. He's going to see eventually if um, he needs to trade away Maldonado somehow. I don't know who would trade for him, but, you know, that's got to be the case eventually. So, Dusty, don't force Click's hand because... You've seen that he will he will do what he needs to do, so you know just just start start Castro and let Click do the rest, and then you guys, the Astros are actually lined up for a pretty darn good tenure behind the dish, believe it or not. Man, what? I'm a